Greetings to my brothers and sisters of Edmonton Impact Gospel Ministries and to all our online supporters and friends. I'm so glad you could join us today as we reflect on him, his name, and all his goodness. May you feel his presence and receive his blessing on you and your family. May he carry us through as he has done so many times. May we learn to trust him even more because we know how faithful he is. Let us pray. Most righteous and adorable Father of heaven, we do give you thanks, O God, in this day. Father, we know of your goodness. We know how much you love us. Almighty God, we have learned to depend on you. We have learned to trust in you. You have brought us through many a long roads, Lord. And Father, we know, God, that we can continue, O oh God, to lean on your everlasting arms. Here we are, O oh God, today to reflect, to dig in your words, Lord, to learn more of you, God. I pray that your, your holy presence will be with us. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will reach out to every ear, O oh God, every eye that behold, God, everyone that tune in, O oh God, this day, that Father in heaven, O oh God, they will receive a blessing from you, that they will be strengthened in their spirit, that Father, they will take a firmer stand, God, that their fear will not overcome them, but Almighty God, they will be filled with your spirit, God, waiting, trusting, oh God, being patient, oh God, knowing that you will come through. Heavenly Father, do have your way today. May your words go forth and hinder today, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I come to you this morning uh, with a question. Are you ready? Are you ready? All of our lives have been spent ready for something or getting ready. Our degree of readiness, I believe, is directly proportional to our preparedness and the steps we are willing to take or have taken. With that in mind, I want to turn to uh, our scripture in Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 35 to verse 48. Of course, I'm reading the Christian Standard Translation. So please follow in your version. Be ready for service and have your lamps lit. You are to be like people waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can open the door for him at once. Blessed will be those servants the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will get ready, have them recline at the table, then come and serve them. If he comes in the middle of the night or even near dawn and finds them alert, blessed are those servants. But know this, if the homeowner had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also be ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Bless the name of the Lord for his words. So when we stop and think of what the Master was trying to, to say to his disciples back then and to us, he was talking about servants being ready for a master. When we, when we look at the scripture in, the, in verse 35, this is how Jesus went about it. Be ready for service. Through verses 36 to 38, he used the examples of obedient servants who stood ready waiting for their master to return 
from a wedding feast. Now, here in the scripture, we are looking at two sets of, of people, the master and the servants. If I use my, my own uh, understanding of that kind of relationship, even in today, we could flesh this out. The master, if we look at him, he would know what he wants from his servants. Quite likely had instructed them in handling his household, explaining things to them what he expected. Expected them to be sensitive to his goings and comings. Trusted them to keep his home secure. After all, who would want uh, people around who would not be able to fulfill our uh, what we expect of them, not be able to shoulder responsibilities. We look at the servants. The servant in that context must, of course, pay close attention to the master's instruction. The servant will adjust his schedule to accommodate his master's uh, whatever plan or his timetable. Had, the servant had to be prompt when called upon. The servant must take his responsibility seriously. Now here are two points that, that stood out for me. One, they can open the door for him at once. Oh my. If they are able to do this, there are certain things that must take place. I would, I would imagine the servants would have to be awake and waiting for the knock of the master. If you're going to open the door uh, exactly at the time the master knocks, you've got to be awake and waiting. Even in the night, they couldn't afford to allow the drowsiness of sleep to distract them or cause them to miss that knock at the door. They must be prepared to fight off weariness and the urge to sleep. They could make the, uh, they could make the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the expression that they, they need to sleep and God knows that their body can only endure so much. Of course, they could say the master knows that we are only human and we get tired. After all, we were laboring all day. But a good servant would be prepared to fight off the weariness and the urge to sleep because they want to be ready at the knock of the master to open that door at once. The servants also would have to be aware that it was in the master's prerogative to choose the time of his arrival. They, they had no control over when the master would return. Their job, their duty, their responsibility is to make sure that their plans fit into their master's plan and be ready when he knocks. They have to be vigilant so as not to keep the master waiting. It was important to them that as soon as the master knocks, he's coming home tired. He's coming home expecting the door to be open for him. They did not want to keep their master waiting at the door. And so they, they made preparation. They must have come up with a plan among them how they were going to remain awake, how they are going to be alert such that they would be ready as soon as the master knocks to promptly open the door for him. Point two, they must be alert for he may come at any time in the middle of the night or even near dawn. These are the words of Jesus Christ. In the scripture it said be ready 
for service and have your lamps lit. The master will want the door to be opened for him at once. So alertness was needed. Readiness must be in place. So when we, when we look at all of that, even in the middle of the night, even close to dawn, they couldn't afford to be murmuring. They couldn't afford uh, to say it would be the master's fault for staying out so late. Their responsibility was to, to be at the door, to be ready to let the master in. When we look at our own spiritual experiences, we would ask, how does this apply to us in spiritual readiness? According to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, I fleshed out some points from there. Point one, we must have our minds ready for action. We must have our minds ready for action. We cannot afford to have our minds wandering around and be loaded down with unnecessary things. We must have our minds alert, set, and ready. Have, we must have our minds ready for action. Point two, with sober-mindedness, set your home completely on his grace. These are all things that we must do in our readiness or getting prepared for what the master requires of us. We must be obedient and not be conformed to our former desires. In other words, we need to know what the instructions of our heavenly master is such that we can comply, make preparation, and be in obedience to what he has commanded. So when he calls for us, we are able to open to him promptly. We are not in a, a state of saying to God, Lord, wait a while, or when he calls for us, he cannot find us. But when he calls for us, we are ready. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. What is your will? In Ephesians 6, verses 13 and 15, 13 to 15, here are some points. Take up the full armor of God so your resistance will be strong. When we thought about the, the servants in the household, how sleep could overtake them, how they could become weary, I mean, when sleep comes and you really want to sleep, it's not an easy chore to, to fight it off. Even the strongest of men or women fall to the drowsiness and heaviness of sleep. You can only resist so long. But when we cross over into the spiritual, we are still required to be alert. Because there is spiritual drowsiness that can affect our alertness. We do not want to be drowsy in our spirit, how we serve the Lord, how we wait for him. So Peter, so Ephesians, Paul in Ephesians was saying, take up the full armor of God. So your resistance will be strong. Your resistance against the things that will weigh you down and cause you not to be alert and waiting for your master. We need to resist. And we can only resist when we take up the full armor of God. Be prepared that you will be able to stand. Oh God, help us Jesus. We are called to stand fast in the liberty where in Christ has set us free. We do not want to falter or fail or fall away. To stand would be comparative to, be, to the servants being alert and waiting. 
We are, we are attentive. We are at attention. We are ready for when the master calls. We must be prepared. We must make preparation to be strong and to stand firm in him. Dig into his words. Pray some more. Make sure we are not ceasing to talk to our master. Have truth as your belt. Righteousness as your breastplate. And choose with readiness for the gospel of peace. God help us, Jesus. You see, when we, when we think of how we must be alert and ready and waiting for the master, Paul adds these to, to the points that we talk about. We need to be strong. We need to be ready. There are too many things to distract us. Too many things to cause us to turn aside, brothers and sisters. But be ready to open that door at once. You know, sometimes we, we talk about the door of our heart. You know, when we think of our service to God, you know, and this you can think of for yourself. If you are a believer, as God has not called for you, and you find yourself in the position uh, trying to turn him away, trying to delay, trying to defer what God was calling you to. If you're finding yourself in situations like that, you don't want to be that way. You want when the master calls you, because of course the master has a plan. His time is never wrong. His clock is never off. If he's calling for you, it means that it is his time to use you. So we want to be in the place where we can say, here I am, Lord, use me. We must be built on the truth. We must be filled with righteousness. We must walk in rest, readiness in the gospel of peace. It's not time to be at wrath with anyone, but to walk in peace. God help us, Jesus. The scripture uh, in, uh, in our main text, in Luke 12 and 35, the scripture went on further to say, have your lamps lit. Have your lamps lit. Be ready for service and have your lamps lit. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 21, he also said to them, is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed? Isn't it to be put on a lampstand? Have your lamps lit. So children of God, let's reason together. Many times we say, yes, we have our light because Jesus is my light. But if the, if the world is not seeing the light of God in you, maybe you have it under a basket. Maybe you have it under a bed. But Jesus referred to, to readiness as being ready to open that door and also having our lamps lit. In other words, the, the light of God must be seen in us. It cannot be hidden. It cannot be obscured. We cannot withdraw it or hide it in a corner. We must allow others to see this light in us. If you are ready, if you are alert, your lamps must be lit. Your lamps must be burning. Your lamps must be bright. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Oh God, help us, Jesus. So your life needs to be presented such that the whole room will be lit. I mean, when your light shines, even among your local congregation, the whole congregation should experience the light from you. 
And when you put all the lights up, our brothers and sisters together, how bright that light shines. Not only so you can see, but such that those who seek Jesus, those who wander in hopelessness and fear, those who are, are concerned about their lives, what am I going to do? They can see hope in the life that you live and the life that you show. So God help us, Jesus. For let your light so shine. In Ephesians 6 and verse 22, it's described like this. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how deep is that darkness? If the light of God is in us, oh brothers and sisters, there can't be darkness and light at the same time. If there is light in us, your light must shine. Your light must shine such that it can drive the darkness out. Such that those around us can see the light of God, see the goodness of God working through you and I. So they will have hope and come to trust in God, our Savior our faithful Lord, the one who we await, the one who will return as he has said. Oh God help us. So when we look at how we tie this all together, in Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, puts it like this. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. You see, when, when, when our light of God dim, desires like this will flourish. Doctrines filled with errors will be prominent among us. But Timothy was encouraged by Paul. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. That's part of allowing your light to shine. That's part of waiting for the master. In obedience, doing what we are called to do. We are encouraged to do it in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage. Oh my God, help us. We cannot encourage anybody in church these days. We cannot rebuke anyone these days because our, our, uh, oh God, our emotions, we are not able to endure correction. You don't correct me because you work out your way. I will work my way out. I will work my way up. Pardon me. But really, we are our brother's keepers. We are called to watch one for another. And when we are ready, we are alert, and we can see the danger that approaches our brothers and sisters. And when we, when we read the word of God, when we study it, when we hear the message from God, it is for our correction to bring us in line with what God is saying. So we will walk in obedience. We will walk in alertness with our lamps lit and burning bright. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Oh God, help us. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. After all, after all, we are not perfect yet, but we must go on to perfection. 
in verse 40 of St. Luke uh, 12. It says, you also be ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So Jesus talked about the master of the house with servants. And then he went on to say, you also be ready. In other words, just like the servants in the house that would be alert and ready, waiting for the knock of the master so they could open, open the door at once. Jesus was saying, just like them, be also ready because the Son of Man, our Master, our Savior, is coming at an hour when we do not expect. He may come at midnight, just like the Master of the house. He may come close to dawn. He may come at noonday. All that is required of us is that we are alert, waiting, watching, anticipating such that when we hear the call, when we hear that knock, or when we hear the trumpet call, we are ready to receive him. We are ready for the return of our Lord. So let's bear these three points in mind. Be ready for service. Don't be so taken up with what is happening that we are saying, oh yes, Lord, hurry up and come back. I can't wait for this world to end. You see, a compassionate heart would say, Lord, wait a while. There are still souls to be saved. There are still many don't know of your goodness. There are still many wandering in their ignorance and darkness. Lord, we have such, such uh, such tasks to do. The harvest is so great, Lord. We want to labor more. We want to work more, God, such that more souls will turn to you. Be ready for service. To be ready for service, we'll be able to see the opportunities around us, the need to hear the cries, to sense the pain and the groaning, the, the, the hopelessness among our neighbors, our friends, our families, ready for service, ready with our lamps lit and burning bright, that who we were gonna, we are gonna share the love of God with, they can see your light burning brightly, that your lamps have not gone out. Two, be ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for his return? Are you ready for the return of our Savior, Lord and King? Have you done all that you can to be ready for his return? He's coming back, brothers and sisters. He's coming back again. We don't know when. We don't know what day. We don't know which year. Just like the servants waiting for their master that had gone to the wedding feast. They did not know when the master was going to return. But it was their responsibility to be ready such that when he returns, no matter what time it is, they will be ready to open the door. For you and I, our responsibility is to be ready in alertness, resisting the evil of the day, resisting false doctrine, resisting the untruth, resisting, you know, the, the, the things of this world that will cause us to lose sight, lose alertness, be drowsy in sleep, not be able to stand firm in righteousness and truth. The things that will cause us to believe that God is not going to return. The things that will cause us to think we have so much time or we think we know when he's going to come back. Our alertness would cause us to want to resist those and look attentively, focusedly, urgently for the return of our Lord. And point three, he rewards 
faithfulness. Oh, God help us, Jesus. He rewards faithfulness. Jesus talks about the master coming in and when, when the servants were alert and they opened the door at once, the master was so happy that he himself comes in, caused the servants to sit down and he turned around and served them. Their rewards for faithfulness, brothers and sisters. When we are faithful to God, he will be pleased. We will find favor and he will reward you and I. You know, there's a saying that goes around that you don't, you don't have to worry about anything. Some people don't believe that faithfulness is necessary because after all, the blood of Jesus has covered everything that we could ever do. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If you're a servant of the Almighty God, you would want to be obedient. You would want to be responsible. You will want to walk in the instructions of your master. You will want to be alert, attentive, doing what the master requires of us. And no matter how long he takes, we will, we will stick to it. We will continue in it. We will press forward in it. We will get better at it and we will hold on. No matter what the crisis around us. Truly I tell you, he will get ready, have them recline at the table, then come and serve him. There must be a reason why Jesus told this to his disciples. There must be some comparison or some way to compare it to what he's preparing for us. After all, he was using things in, in their time such that they would understand what he was talking about. It is for you and I today that we will pay heed to these words. So my question to you, are you ready? And if your answer is yes, ready for what? Are you ready for service of the Lord should he calls for you? Are you ready for his return? Is your lamp lit and burning bright? Are you alert? Are you aware? Are you walking in obedience? How ready are you for the return of our Lord? How ready are you to, this, to do service for the Almighty King? How ready are you to witness to the lost how ready are you to be able to let your light shine before your friends, your neighbors, and your peers? How ready are you to be an example to your, your spouse or your family? How ready are you to take the step at the higher calling in him? How ready are you to dig deeper, to study his words, to know exactly what God has said in the scripture? How ready are you to the yielding to the Holy Spirit, to receiving instructions from God, to do the things that God has called you to do? Only you can answer these questions. For you and I, he has called us to be ready. That's what Jesus is saying. Be ready. Be ready. Because you don't know when he returns. If he's calling us to this readiness, brothers and sisters, that means there's a danger of us not being ready. And not being ready will take on a whole different meaning. That means there is a way to be ready and a way not to be ready. What will happen if he returns and we are not ready? What would happen? Some believe nothing would happen. But if Jesus took the time to point this out, I want you to stop and think. Block out the contrariness and think about it. If he said be ready because you don't know when he returns, that means there's a danger he could find us not ready and something else will happen. But if you're ready, 
We will let him in. He will bring us into what he has promised us and deliver his promises. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May you be ready even in these times. Despite the health scares around us. Despite how bad it is. It's still not an excuse not to be ready for God. As a matter of fact, this is the very time you want to get it to know him even more. And for those of you out here who don't, who haven't surrendered to him, who is still thinking, you know, is there really something in this? I would encourage you. Take it from me as I tell you. I was once like you. But then Jesus found me. I got to see his call. I got to see his life. I got to see his way. And the day I opened my heart to him was, was the greatest day of my life. You can have the same experience because he's calling and waiting for you. Let us pray. Oh dear Heavenly Father, help us God to be ready. Help us to be alert. Help us God to whom you have entrusted this gospel God. Help us not to oh God to slack off oh Father in heaven. Help us not to be buried under oh God the worries of this world that we will lose sight oh God of what you have called us to. That Father we would not be strong in you or alert that God the enemy God will be able to deceive us oh God with lies and oh God all kind of things that he is able to use Father heaven to those who are ignorant and weak oh God not not be able to stand firm in the truth of the gospel of Christ Father in heaven I pray God that your hand will be upon each one today God that have heard these words that Almighty Father oh God you will straighten us in you God that you will oh God break every oh God every picture that will hold us back Heavenly Father, from completely surrendering to your way. Help us, God, to be ready, having our lamps lit and burning bright. Help us, God, to be awake, oh, Father in heaven, not to fall prey to drowsiness, oh, God, and wantonness, Lord, but Almighty God, to walk in obedience, oh, Father in heaven, watching for the day, watching for the opportunity, listening, oh, God, for your call, listening for your instruction, Father, digging deeper in prayer, in fasting, Almighty God, that, Father, we will be ready for service, Lord, for the needs are great around us, Almighty God. So, Father, help us, oh, God, to step up, oh, God, to step up, Lord Jesus, and to be here when you need us, to use us, to serve you, oh, God, and for your return. Heavenly Father, we give you praise today. Thank you, and blessed be your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you this day. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you and give you peace, both now and forever. If you're out there today and uh, you would like to support this ministry in your offering or even in tithes, you know, you can pay online at eigministries.com or you can do e-transfer to give at eigministries.com. And may the Lord richly bless you in your faithfulness to him. God bless you all.